Corinthians real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Hallelujah. I must keep reiterating. When it comes to spiritual things and spiritual power. Every tool and every weapon God gave us originates from a power. Amen. And that power God started each one of you off with as a believer. The Bible calls it the measure of faith. Not a measure the measure everyone was started off with the same amount so it is your responsibility to grow that faith why is that so important because without it you cannot please God you can't please him so how can you serve someone you don't please it's impossible. Without faith, you become an enemy to God. Because your carnal mind will constantly rob you from your walk in the spirit realm. So, faith comes by hearing. That's the only way faith grows. It comes by hearing. But every opportunity you get, you should do what? Energize your faith through praise and thanksgiving. This is why the Bible said that you should always give thanks. In everything, give thanks. Amen? So every opportunity you get, you should energize your praise. I mean, especially when you come together with saints of God. So, if you don't take the opportunity that's given to you, then what happens? Then you invoked another scripture. He that knoweth to do good and don't do it, to him it is a sin. Amen. So why walk in here in one sense, obey God and come in together, the scripture says, and then sin once you get here? Does that make any sense? Hello, talk to me, y'all. Doesn't make any sense at all. Now, I don't know who was doing what. My eyes was closed the whole time. Because I don't let nobody turn off my little flame. <laughs> Amen. So I don't know who was doing what, all right? So if you're going to walk in here and then sin, amen, you've been better off staying at home. Amen. When you walk in here and everything's difficult and everything's hard, and you got a bad report, and everything fell apart, you're in the perfect opportunity to do did what? A sacrifice of praise. That's praise on steroids. What do you mean? That's how God receives it. It may not be how you're giving it, but that's how God receives it. Amen. But that's only one half of it. When you sin it up, brother, sister, what goes up must come down. When you sin it up, it's mixed, mixed with the blessings of heaven. And God pours it back out to you. Amen. Amen. Within it 
is what you need. So if you need a word from God, why come here and sin and walk right out of here and forfeit your word from God? Amen. You need strength from God, then why forfeit it? James 1 and 21, somewhere in there says, the doer of the works shall be blessed in their deeds. Something you got to do. Well, I'm waiting for God. I got news for you. He waiting for you. Amen. Praise God. Y'all got 2 Corinthians. I'm just waiting until you get to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. As an appetizer, won't cost you nothing. Second Corinthians chapter 11, look at verse 13. We're going to pick up what we attended to do Sunday. Pick up, we've been talking about discerning the religious spirit. Discerning the religious spirit. Let's look at counterfeit gifts. Now, there's one that we're going to zero in on. Of course, there are a numerous amount of gifts. But there's one in particular that we're going to, we're going to zero, zero in on. And, of course, once we do, you're going to see why. Because I believe amongst all of them, it is the most abused. This particular one. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 13 says, For such are false apostles. Look at, listen to what Paul says. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers. Now he's, he's, he's especially, specifically, Speaking to the last day church. That's you and I. Brother says, I don't know if you realize it or not. But you've helped me, you, you've, you've heard me say again and again, we're in transition, we're in transition, we're in transition. Well, you know what the transition is. We have literally crossed biblically, according to God's time, we've crossed into the last day. The scripture says you can know the times and seasons, right? Amen. I was laying in bed the other night, and the scripture kept came up to me when I, when I woke. Ecclesiastes. There is a time and season and purpose under heaven. Well, you look at that word "season" from that word "season." It's come from the word, the Hebrew word. Moed, the same word that God uses in Genesis. A, a Kairos time. A set time. An appointed time is a better word. An appointed time. So we've entered into an appointed time. The last day. I encourage you to go through the New Testament and see what it has to say about the last days. Amen. One particular thing comes into mind. God said, in these days, I will pour out of my spirit. Right? But Paul also wrote to Timothy when he said what? In the last days, perilous times shall come. Now, one translation says, times of great stress. Times of great stress. You know the number one medicine that is sold here in America is for stress. But brother, sister, that's going to greatly increase. I've said this a number of times. And like I can't say that enough. And when I say it, I, I really don't do it justice based on what I've seen and what I feel every day. When this, the season that we're, we, we've, we've, went in, we've went into, now, now if, if for there to be a season, then you have to talk about what? Seed time and harvest, 
right? Sowing and reaping, right? Though that particular word in Genesis is not talking about the four seasons, but you're talking about the way the kingdom of God operates. Everything that we see was sown. both in the natural and in the spirit. Amen? So when you talk about last days, then the things that are coming up now in the last days were sown. They were sown. God has been endeavoring in my life and in your life to ensure that whatever that was bad that was sown in your life do not come up in this hour. That was the Holy Spirit's agenda hitherto. That was all the breaking and the tests and the trials and the brokenness and the weeping and the sleepless nights and the crying out to God that if we, you have went through this is what all of this was for Holy Spirit endeavoring to get you to do what surrender to the Lord submit to his ways right in so doing in so doing, you have nothing for the religious spirit to feed off of. Now remember, everything sown must be fed in order to perpetuate. Right? Everything sown. A tree grows a fruit. Within the fruit are more seeds. They fall to the ground and it rises up again. Right? This is how the enemy has been able to perpetuate generational curses. We ourselves are seeds. We started as one. And within us and our DNA, amen, is the curses of previous generations. Amen. And because we are all different, the enemy watches over us just as the angels of God does when you come into the world and you're in a you're in a state of innocence if you don't surrender your life to the Lord before you leave that state of innocence the angels of the Lord steps back away from you your God and protection is gone and it stays away from you until you surrender your life back to the Lord and when you do that angel, that angelic protection comes back now and becomes your your protection again and camps about you. And they have a responsibility to do what? To ensure that what God has sown in you, it comes to pass. That means what God has put inside of you before you came here. That means what God speaks over you prophetically while you are here. That means what God says to you while you walk on this earth. Their responsibility is to see to it what was sown comes to pass. But you have a part to play. You have to find out what heaven has told them. So you can do what? Agree with them. Come into agreement. Brothers and sisters, somewhere along the line, we need to stop doing our own thing. Somewhere along the line, we need to stop living our own life. We need to surrender it to the Lord. You can't, now you can, but you shouldn't be rewriting the script. It's already been written. That's what most Christians don't understand. Listen, 
in every scenario, in every situation, God has seen it concerning you. God has looked, let's look at it this way. God has looked down that road. If you took that road and then seen what would happen to your life. He's looked down this road. If you took that road and he's seen what would happen to your life. If you, he looked down this road and if you took this road, he's seen what has happened in your life. In every scenario and situation, God knows how it will play out. He knows. But there's only one road. One. That which was predestined before the foundation of the world that you are to walk on. And that is the only thing the angels are concerned with. The only thing. Now you quote, you know as well as I do. Because God is a good God and is a merciful God. Amen. If God when if, if God can move and get someone to pray for you, amen, when you veer off the road, you get on another road, God has to raise somebody up to pray for you. Ultimately to do what? Get back on the right road. Not to keep battling things in your life, away from your life, while you're on the wrong road. Because, guess what? The inevitable will happen. You hear what I'm saying to you? The inevitable will happen. Eventually, the enemy will cut your life short. Amen. So, bad things happen to good people. Good people who are ignorant good people who are rebellious amen and good people who just simply want to do what their own thing huh all of this does what give rise give power to the religious spirit why is that so important that? remember I start off saying everything that is reaped everything that is sown must be fed it must be fed to continue we're in a time now where both good and evil are being harvested amen and it's really time for us to listen to the Lord and get the leaven out of our life Because whatever is there, the enemy will feed off of. And he will get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger in your life. Especially in this season we have crossed over into. This is what's so important. And brother, sister, all of the gains that you have made. Whether it's natural or spiritual. If there is mixture in your life. The Holy Spirit or the religious spirit. Holy Spirit or leaven. If there is mixture in your life. The leaven will overrun it. Amen. It will overrun it. So as we move into this season right now, as we are crossing over and transitioning in this season now, you know what the Lord is doing? He's walking amongst his garden now. He's walking amongst his garden now. And those who he had extended time to, to get it together, now he's ready to pluck those out of the garden that are unproductive. See, because God, remember, God knows what your end is. Amen. Different situations have been coming up in your life. God is foreseeing change on every front. On every front. 
we see a big demonstration of it in the world now. The Lord has dropped the plumb line and he's forcing people to choose. And in that choosing, we have saw people, you know, come out the closet if it were. I'm not talking about in a homosexual sense. Come out the closet if it were. I mean, even Christians on, on the side of issues that are so far from God. That it is unbelievable. Well, how did that happen? That did not happen to them overnight. You hear what I'm saying to you? That that's that was in them. It was sown there. And because of right circumstances and situations, it started bearing fruit. But this is what I'm going to get you to understand. Under this present climate now, things that are changing now, there are things that will bear fruit now in your life. If it is present there, that will not be stopped. It will not be stopped. Both good and evil are coming up at the same time. In the world, in the church, and within you. So the Lord is moving now within his garden. And because of his mercy and because he's good, the Lord has been taking people out of the garden. Christians. What do you mean taking them out? Taking them home. Amen. And it will increase, brother sister. It will increase. In these next few years, Christians, many will die. Because, what well, again, God knows future. And if people keep making the wrong decisions, causing them to veer off their course, then the Lord, we're entering into a time of what? Perdition. the thing that separated Judas from the other 12. He's called the son of perdition. There was a set season that he had to get his life together. When that season ended, he was out of time. He was out of time. And so... <clears throat> And so we're going to see God's mercy. It's going to be God's mercy displayed when people seemingly for no reason, out of the blue, gone. I'm talking about Christians. The only way uh, uh, many sinners will survive, many of them will not survive without the prayers of the saints. Because they are our inheritance. The heathen are our inheritance. So, these things that are happening now, God is allowing to happen. What, what, what is God's ultimate objective? To bring forth purity. To bring forth a people with no mixture and that truly loves him. Amen. So, this war is going on and it will increase, it will intensify this war against the true and the false. 
the good and the evil. And brother, sister, we need the eyes of God to be able to discern what comes from the tree of life and what comes from the tree of good and evil. See, because now in this season that we've crossed over into, what will be amplified in this season, it is not the evil part of the tree of good and evil, but the good part. Because what will be one of the, the, the religious spirits main strongholds deception the ability to deceive so brother sister from the tree of good and evil you can see something that looks good but you don't know it has its root in evil you don't know to walk away from it you've already bit into it so what's being amplified now by the enemy is the good from the tree of good and evil. You need to be able to discern what's coming from the tree of life. Truth. Do you hear me? Truth. And only Holy Spirit can show you. That's what either in your own life or in people's life you encounter. Because Paul is telling you what? False apostles, deceitful workers are going to arise in our day transforming themselves into the apostle of Christ. The good of the tree of good and evil. And they will come doing what? Miracles. Just as Moses just as Pharaoh's sorcerers threw down their rods and it turned to a snake, Moses threw down his and it turns to a snake. We are entering into those days, brother, sister. When Billy Graham went home, he was the last of the, old, of the 1948 move. He was the last. Now God is getting ready to take the anointing off of the old move that has been working in the church. So that platform which the church has been operating on is about to be fall apart and be completely turned over to the religious spirit. Completely. And many of the church will be deceived. They are ripe for deception. Listen what Paul is saying. They are transforming themselves, saying all the right buzzwords, doing all the right things in public. So how are you going to discern what they are so quickly? Only by spirit. And Jesus said, by their what? By their fruit, you will know them. See, what's being sown and what's being reaped. Paul says in verse 14, and no marvel. He said, don't be surprised with this. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Now see, this process has been work, at work in the church for centuries. Brother, sister, understand this. In the last days, in the day we just entered into, it's taken on a whole new meaning. A whole new meaning. A whole new way that we have never seen. We have never seen. There's a level of darkness that's coming that we have never seen. The earth has never experienced. There are things that are being emptied out on this earth from the pit of the hell that has never walked this earth before, that have never been allowed to walk this earth. Things that have been bound, amen, in the bottomless place. Look what the, Bible, the book of Revelation says.
Remember what John says, he saw a frog come out of the sea. Well, if you know anything about the spirits of perversion, these type, animal type things, frogs, spiders, all of those are in the perverted kingdom. All of those type creatures. All of the sexual perverted spirits look like animals. Morbed animals. And one of them in that kingdom is, it looks like a frog. Paul said, I'm sorry, it comes out of the sea in these last days. So it's in line with what Jesus said. As it was in the days of Noah, so should it also be at the coming of the Son of Man. Now understand this. In the height of great perversion, there would be a religious awakening. In the height of great perversion, great evil, it will be a religious awakening. The world will become religious. Amen. It will. And if you're not spiritually discerning, you will think that the world is turning to Christ, turning to God. Amen? Amen. This is what the book of Revelation teaches. Spirit of Jezebel would join itself with the religious spirit. It's the woman riding. It is the, it is the, the fake church. And within this religious setting, within this fake church, what is one characteristic that is indicative of all of them? Stuck on themselves. Amen. Remember the spirit of Babylon that showed up in Nimrod's day. Let us go to, let us make a name for ourselves. That's what the religious spirit is about. And this is about to arise in the church where we should be abasing ourselves. And humbling ourselves, it will be the opposite in the religious church. What does that sound like to you? Hollywood. Hollywood in the church. Huh? They already got to move what? Preachers of Hollywood. Disgusting. Sickening. All about the Benjamin. Brother sister, it is time, it is time to really protect your heart now. It is time to really know in whom you believe and what you believe. Listen to me, very important. What you believe. Because what you believe is what you're going to respond to. Verse 15, he goes on to say, Therefore, because Satan has transformed himself into an angel of light. Because, listen, again, ev everything is becoming religious. See, the, the, the church thinks everything is going to be falling apart. Yeah, everything will be falling apart. But the people of the world will be becoming religious, spiritual. Some will be praying to a rock. Some will be praying to a tree. But everybody's spiritual. Because it's the rise of the religious spirit. Huh? 
because the false prophet, the Pope, and the false prophets out there are teaching that all paths lead to the one God. All paths. And brother, sister, you, the church, the remnant, standing out by itself will become a prey for the enemy. Amen. If we die, we die in the army of the Lord. Huh? No one would be able to ultimately take your life if God doesn't allow it. This must be your attitude. So verse 15, Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of what? Righteousness. That's good, brother, sister. That's from the tree of good and evil. Whose end shall be according to their works. You weep what you sow. Now remember from our previous lesson, religious spirit, we talked about pride and fear, remember? I want to make one observation. The religious spirit seeks to try to lead a person to seek profession, perfection in oneself by one's own power. But as believers, we have to remember what? James 3, 2. James 3, 2 says, For in many things we offend all. So we're all in the same boat. Now listen what James says. If any man offend not in word. Listen to what he says. Meditate on this all week. Why? Because you are what you say. Just as you are what you eat. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect, mature man. I tell you right now, the church hasn't learned this one. And able also to bridle the whole body. Now what comes into place when you talk about bridle? You talk about a horse. Right? You know anything about a horse? You take the bridle, you put it in the horse's mouth a bit. When you pull on it, it puts pressure on and makes the horse uncomfortable and he does what? Turn willfully. Other than that, you're going to have to have a trained horse to listen to your commands. But you take a horse that is not fully trained, per se, you put a bridle on it, put a bit in his mouth, boom, you can turn him whichever way you want because of the pressure, the, the minor pain that is put on him. Paul is saying, this is what words does. Whatever there is that's wrong about you, Whatever there is that's messed up about you. Whatever there is that caused you to fail over and over and over again. It's based in this premises. It's based upon what you believe. Do y'all hear me? Brother, sister, this is how the religious spirit will gain ascendancy. Remember, the book of Revelation tells us when the Antichrist comes in, he comes in with a bow and no arrows. He will not come in fighting. They will vote him in. 
they will want him. You know what I'm saying? This is why the religious spirit is now cloaking all of his prophets, his apostles, and teachers with a, with a, with a spirit, a light spirit like that of the people of God. And it will come saying all the right things. It will come doing all the right things. But within their mouth, brother, sister, will be mixture. Within their mouth will be mixture. When Lucifer came and tempted the Lord, what did he come with? Scripture. He took two scriptures out of context and put them together. And it made it something that God didn't say. You say, oh, that's that, that scripture. He quoted scripture. <laughs> so what? There's a lot of people out there quoting scripture. Let me tell you about, uh, 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 there's, a, there's a minister on TV. Uh, Prince is his name. From Singapore. Very, very dangerous person. This grace message that he preaches is not scriptural. It is not scriptural. When you listen to the whole thing and dissect it and, tear, and take it apart. But that's what people don't do. And this is what the enemy does. He say, put certain things out there and dangle that is, that is good to the hearing. One thing that Paul says that will rise in our day that the religious spirit will be able to um, monopolize on is what? The itching ears of the last days. See, that's the religious spirit. Because with the religious spirit, there's no discipline. No discipline. Listen, that's one of the characteristics of a Christian as a disciple. A disciple is a disciplined one. I, I'm, 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 I'm trying to show you these characteristics that the enemy will magnify in our day. When everybody else is casting off restraint. When everybody else is talking about, I want to be heard. This is my time. All of the characters riches that are not Christ-like. Hum humility. Preferring one another. But the enemy will always come dangling a carrot to distract people. What would be his carrot? Miracles. The Pope will usher in great miracles. Watch him. You ain't never hear of him doing no miracles. But he will start. And then all of those, and not just him, he will lead the pack of false prophets. When all of those who see the truth begin to step back from him, then the killings and the murder will, will begin just like it did in the 14th and 15th century. Brother and sister, there is nothing new under the sun. That which was shall be. So, so James is telling us a believer's perfection 
comes through learning how to do a control one tongue and what comes out of your mouth. That's where perfection comes for us. Right? Because we are fruit in God's garden. He planted us. We need his word to be fruitful according to scripture. So again, I keep saying to you tonight, what do you believe? What do you believe about giving? What do you believe about walking in love? Well, you know what a lot of Christians believe? Well, if they don't love me, then I, I don't have to show them no love. If you ask them outright, do they believe that they'll tell you not? But that's what they do. So that's what they believe. See, they know what the Scripture says, but that's not what they believe. Because that's not what they do. You do what you believe. What does the scripture say about forgiving when you're hurt? I forgive them, but I'll never forget what that old dirty dog did to me. Well, you ain't forgave them. See, it is these things, these leavens, that the religious spirit will have an inroads into the believer's life. And these are things that the Holy Spirit for quite some time has been trying to magnify in all of our lives. Because the time will come. Paul says to Timothy, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Men will be lovers of themselves. The Babylonian spirit, I. Proud boastful, heady, high-minded, haters of those that are good. That's the religious spirit. Haters of those that are good. So, brother, sister, when you purpose to be good in this dark world, you will be hated. You will be hated. So don't start whining. Because people don't like you. You will be hated. The Bible says you will be hated. And you will be hated by most of the church. Because most of the church will be compromising. It is those that are lost and in darkness. Many of them will welcome you before the church will. Because what? They know they're in a mess. They're not deceived. It is the church that will be deceived. So, therefore, you've got to learn how to control your tongue. Therefore, perfect obedience and understanding should always be our goal. Perfect obedience and understanding and all thy getting get an understanding. That's wisdom. But only as we come to perfectly abide in the perfect one. That's the Lord. Now Jesus told you in John 15, if ye abide in me, what? In my words abide in you. See, we're back to words again. You can't abide in him if your his words are not in you. It's impossible. It's going back to what you believe. Do you believe the same thing Jesus believes? Well, how can you walk together? Y'all don't agree. What does Jesus believe about your life? At this point in time in your life, what does he believe? You need to find out. Because if you don't believe what he believes about you, you're not in agreement. And you will find yourself fighting against him.
You have to understand this. We don't become perfect in order to do the work of God. But we are perfected or changed by doing his work. See, it's back to obedience again. If you love me, do what I say. See, when we take his yoke, we are joined to him and his strength. It's by this union we find rest. See, as I told you suddenly, this is why it's a yoke. See, a yoke is put on someone who wants to do their own thing. <laughs> who wants to go their own way. So Jesus said, take my yoke. What is his yoke? His word. Do what I say concerning this. Do what I say concerning that. Do what I say concerning this. Do what I say concerning that. See? You don't want to do it, but it's a yoke. So you do what? You humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Let's do what he says. You're under his yoke. See, the religious spirit attempts to copy everything Holy Spirit does. We have to be able to discern it. So, in the church, remember this one, this gifting I was talking about. In the church, discerning of spirits, instead of discerning of spirits, the religious spirit cloaks itself as spirit of discernment. How, how, how many of you have heard that? I got the spirit of discernment. <laughs> Ain't no such thing. Not in the church. It's discerning of spirit. It's supernatural insight into the spirit realm. You see into that realm. You discern what spirit is behind what's operating. See, and all those talking about, I got the gift of discernment. Oh, no, they just got the gift of nosiness. That's what they got. See, the counterfeit thrives on what is wrong with others rather than seeing what God is doing to help them. Very important. The counterfeit spirit thrives on what is wrong with others rather than seeing what God is doing to help them. This is where this spirit does the most damage. Its ministry will leave more damage and divided than healed and reconciled. This counterfeit is motivated by suspicions and fear. This, this suspicion is rooted in in things such as rejection, territorial preservation, or just general insecurity. See, these type of things are in your life. You have to let God deal with those things. Or the religious spirit. Listen, remember I told you the religious spirit showed up in the garden. What did? He magnified the life of Eve. She felt inferior to her husband. A spirit of inferiority. Why? Because she didn't know as much as he did. And that's why she took the bait. Not just because she was ignorant. She had the teacher standing behind, beside her. Her husband. It was this sense of inferior, inferiority. You have to watch that spirit. Because it will make you get in a battle, debate, you know, for the, for the, for the sake because, because your flaws may stand out more than the other. And this is why Eve took the bait. 
more than anything. Her ignorance was secondary. It's, it's through this counterfeit that the controlling spirit try to manifest. I look at an example real quickly. Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, verse 18. This is Jesus talking. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to hear the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, Recovering of sight to the blind, to sit at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. This was in his hometown. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wonder. At the gracious words, now listen to them. At the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. Now watch this. And then very quickly, ain't this Joseph's son? <laughs> Other words, now they're questioning what he just said. Because his daddy was a carpenter. He was a carpenter. They question the anointing on him now. He just told him them who he was. Then he said unto them, You will surely say, Now this got him hot. Unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Now he was, they wasn't say heal itself because Jesus wasn't sick. That's what the, that's not what they were saying. They start saying to him what they had heard he done, had done in other places. In other words, you just told us this who you are, prove it. That's what they were saying to him. Instead of believing what he said, they wanted him to prove what he said. Now listen, this is the son of God. He is no different today. The religious spirit will want you to get Jesus to prove what he said. It happens in churches all over the place. People are not believing. They want Jesus to prove what he said. Yeah. They come in prayer lines. They ain't supplying faith. They want him to prove what he said. It is no different than what they did. The religious spirit. Whatsoever we heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. Now, everybody want to make it big in their hometown. Hometown boy come home, preach in the synagogue. Everybody want to make it big in the hometown. Now, don't you know if Jesus had anointed himself, if he could release that power himself, the place he would want to do the best is where? In his hometown where all his buddies grew, where he grew up at. But because they came at him religiously, they shut him down. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? They shut him down. And the church has been doing the same thing ever since. And it will greatly increase in these coming days under the religious spirit. So what happened? They will shut Jesus down the church and the religious spirit would accommodate them. The religious spirit will step in and do the miracles. Now look what Jesus said in verse 24. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet accepted in his own country. <laughs> so I had to come to live with that. <laughs> And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet excepting in his own country. But I tell you of a truth, many widows, now listen to what he's saying. Now he's proven what he just said to them. 
this power doesn't work based on demand. You know what I'm saying? That's what Christians think. This power doesn't work based on demand. Because if that was the case, all of the widows would have been fed in Elijah's day. Huh? Do you agree? But he was sent to only one. The one in Seraphat, the city of Sidon. The one widow. And then he gives them another one. Many lepers was in Israel in the time of Elijah the prophet. But he didn't go to none of them but Naaman the Syrian. Huh? So what is, he, what is Jesus saying to them? He said, it ain't got nothing to do with how, what your needs are or how much your needs are out here. It has to do with what I just read to you. Do you believe? Now, watch this. Instead of them believing, the religious spirit rose up in them. No, we want it based on the, the demand. And all day in the synagogue, when they heard the thing, were filled with wrath. Now, they just weren't angry. Listen, the religious spirit, the murdering spirit runs with the religious spirit, y'all. The murdering spirit. That's why you see much, so much murder in Islam. It's the religious spirit. The murdering spirit runs with it. Religious spirit will first try to intimidate you, but they try to do Jesus, with un eye contact and have truths. If that don't work, then they subject to get violent. Brothers and sisters, I'm saying to you, expect the violence in these coming days. Expect it. See, the true gift only functions with love. Faith works by love. They couldn't believe if they wanted to. Any other motive than love would distort spiritual perception. It would distort it. Any other motive. You won't be able to see. You won't be able to discern. Whenever someone submits a judgment or criticism, listen to me, about another person or group, we should disregard it unless we know that the one bringing it truly loves that person or group. Because if they don't, it's the religious spirit. There are such things as constructive criticism. You know that. See, so whether innocent Christians ignorantly yield to this fake gift doesn't matter. If they don't judge themselves, Satan will use them as angels of light. So Paul warned, and we read it to you. Paul warned in, in 2 Corinthians 11. about those who ministered in a religious spirit which sought to bring a yoke of legalism upon the church. Remember now, have truths come from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Religious spirits are quick to point out what's wrong in others. Yet, it is done, now listen to me, yet it is done in a way that tears down, not build up. 
from the tree of life comes only good. That wisdom is from above. God will always give you what? A way out. Wisdom will. See, the, the problem with the other, the other is the enemy, he baits humanity with the good side, cause them to fail with the evil side. Remember again, the religious spirit always look at what is wrong with the person rather than what is right. This spirit will always call division and destruction. If you speak constructive criticism to someone, it should be in love. Why? Because with loving kindness, God drew you, and you will draw someone else. Love is tangible, brother, sister. It's a heavenly materiality. It can be felt and sensed. Criticism holds forth an appearance of wisdom. But it is pride in one of its most basic forms. Destructive criticism I'm talking about. When we criticize, we are declaring ourselves to be better. Again, don't, don't get me wrong. There is such thing as constructive, constructive criticism. It does it in love because it wants one to be what? Better. This is why God does it to us. So keep in mind again what 2 Corinthians 11 says. I'll read it from the Amplified again. For such men are counterfeit apostles, deceitful workers masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder since Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. So is no great surprise if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness, but their end will correspond with their deeds. Now, Adam and Eve made a decision to live by the knowledge of good and evil. They were partaking of the religious spirit. The first results was what? The first results, self-centeredness. That's the first thing showed up. Notice what happened to their first child. He was the tiller of the ground, right? Cain, earthly minded rather than heavenly minded. His seed walked by sight rather than by faith. Cain tried to offer a sacrifice to God that was not in faith. Someone said, no, he didn't offer blood or an animal. Uh-uh, that wasn't it. Cain was a tiller of the ground. Abel was a keeper of the field. Cain brought what he worked, the ground. Abel brought what he worked. When you look at it again in Scripture, you find the distinction. The Bible said Abel brought a tithe and a fatling or an offering. Cain only brought an offering. He didn't bring the tithe. He didn't bring God the first fruit. He brought an offering. Abel brought both. So the first murder was over money, in a sense. Disobeying what God said. And he had no reason to be jealous. All he had to do was obey. See, when he refused to obey, something else was able to slip into his heart. And it brought murder in him. 
Brothers and sisters, that's why it's so dangerous to disobey. You open the door to a spirit that will ultimately destroy you. And it's the religious spirit. Remember, the enemy is deception. He must make it look advantageous to you. So God rejected it. What Cain gave. And then warned him. So the religious spirit attempts to do things in his own strength. To present those works to God. It will not be accepted. Jesus didn't accept it from the scribes and the Pharisees. Hey, read this last scripture and we're done. Matthew chapter 23. Then spake Jesus to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, the scribes and the Pharisees, now listen to them. Now they were sitting right, they were sitting all around when Jesus was saying this. The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. And therefore, whatsoever they bid you, observe that observe and do. But do not ye after their works. For they say and do not. Remember what Jesus said? The, re the, the, the religious spirit, what, what, um, what was the fruit of the religious spirit when it came to the scribes and Pharisees? Hypocrisy. For they bind heavy burdens, grievous to be borne, and they laid them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They brought their, 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 their um, whatever that word is, <laughs> and enlarged their borders of their garments. Now, if you check many of the most religious, religious uh, 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 religions that's present in, 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 in the earth today. Three major religions. What they all have in common. You know. Monanists. Uh, um, all of them believe in one God. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. The three major ones. And of course, there's no secret what most of them were doing in Islam. They put all the women on the heavy burden. Got them mashed up, you know, like a mummy walking around. And they walking around pedophiles, sleeping with boys, uh, you know, doing stuff with girls. But they quoting to them the Koran. Hypocrisy. It's the way the scribes and the Pharisees were. Jesus said, verse 5, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. See, the spirit of Babylon. They make their broad and they love the othermost rooms at feasts, the chief seats in the synagogues, greeting in the markets. And they like to be called men by men, rabbi, rabbi, teacher, teacher. But be not ye called rabbi, for one, of, for one is your master, even Christ. And all of you are brethren. And the Lord said, you're all on the same level. There's only one above you, Christ. And call, no, and call no man your father on the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Neither ye be called master, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you, you shall be your servant. Brother says, listen, all of this will disappear in these coming days in the church. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that humbles himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourself, neither suffer ye them to enter in. That's terrible. 
Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for your preachers make long prayers. Therefore, you shall receive the greater damnation. What does it mean, devour widows' houses? Go in there, eat up all their food, take their little money for them, and leave. Instead of taking care of the widows. Woe unto you, scribe, Pharisee, hypocrites, for ye compass com sea and land to make one proselyte. He said, you go all across the seas to make one proselyte just like yourself. <laughs> and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourself. Woe unto you, blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple is nothing, but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple is a debtor. Listen, what is Jesus trying to get a hold of you? Listen, what, this is what I'm saying to you. This will magnify in our day the religious spirit in the church. It will magnify. It will be all around us. Ye fools and blind, for, for whatever is greater, the gold of the temple... That sanctif or the temple that sanctified the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever swear by the gift that is upon the altar, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctified the gift. Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, swear by it, and by all things thereon. Whosoever shall swear by the temple, swear by it, and by him dwelleth therein. And he that swear by heaven, swear by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye paid tithes of mint, anons, cumins, and have committed the weight of matter of the law, judgment, mercy, faith. These ought ye have done, and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides, which strain in a net and swallow a camel. You know, picking out the littlest thing that is in a person's life. But the big stuff in your life, you don't pay no attention to. Woe unto you, scribe, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you may clean the outside of the cup and platter, but within them are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisees, cleanse first that which was in the cup and platter, that the outside of them that may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribe, Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whitest sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but within, full of dead men's bones and are unclean. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribe, Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them which kill the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of, the, of hell? Now can you see why they wanted to kill Jesus? <laughs> he called them what they were. Remember that relig the religious spirit doesn't just murder the body. It murders through hate as well. Amen. He that hated his own brother in his heart, Jesus says, Paul says, is a murderer. So, brother and sister, we have to protect our heart in these days. The religious spirit is cloaked. And we need Holy Spirit to discern in our own individual life. Lord, is this from the tree of life or is this from the tree of good and evil? Allow Holy Spirit, stand to your feet. Allow Holy Spirit to help you troubleshoot things in your life. What do you mean by troubleshoot? When you get a response in your life from something that you know is not right, don't overlook it. Ask Holy Spirit, where is that coming from? Where is the root of that? 
Amen. In times past, if Holy Spirit has allowed these things to reoccur again and again and again in your life, you know what was happening. He was after it. He was trying to extract it from you. He dropped the hedge. And God allowed that thing to grow wild in your life. But brothers and sisters, we are past this time now. We are past that time. We are moving in the time now. This time where the just lives by faith. This time where the Lord is bringing forth all that is good about you. Him shining forth in you. Is the Lord making that mirror clearer so you can see him? When you see him more clearly, then you begin to understand what you believe and why you believe it. He makes all the difference in the world. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for Holy Spirit who ex exposes all counterfeit. You said those who are lovers of the truth are blessed. You admonished us to take your yoke. We place the yoke up on our own neck. You don't do it. In so doing, you show us what we need to believe. Because what we believe is what we become. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have been working to this end to undo the wrong things we believe. That as a horse, we may turn our life toward the king. And humble ourselves before him. You are in the time, Lord, of extracting roots. You said let them all grow together. And at the end, the end of days, harvest time. We're at harvest time, Lord. Both good and evil is being harvested. You will separate. We're at this time, Lord, at harvest time. That's only when wheat and terror can be discerned. Until that time, they both look alike. We thank you for Holy Spirit to help us discern. what is not like you in our life, the root of it, to surrender it to you, that you, the great extractor, will go through your garden and put in the sickle. We ask you tonight to put in the sickle, Holy Spirit. Continue to separate the tree of good and evil the tree of life in our life. You separate soul from spirit, joint and marrow. 
take a hold of our thoughts. Let us discern. Help us to know what's from you and what is not. Thank you, Father. Come on, just lift up both hands and thank God for his word. We thank you, Father, for a magnified eye in this day. You are helping us. You are helping us to help ourselves. You are helping us to help you to finish in this season what you started in each one of them. Hallelujah. Our faith and confidence is in you, Lord, is not in ourselves. We enter the rest. We look to you. You are well able. We thank you tonight. Holy One of God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory, 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 glory. Holy Spirit, encourage each one of you tonight. Enter in the rest. Do not struggle in this hour. Struggling, you will miss the mark. Enter in to rest. Entering into rest, putting all the confidence in Him. Not only is he able, he will. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Well, turn around.